you know, it's always been my dream to have you make a pair of shoes. You know, I want to be one of the first ones out of the post-COVID gate, if you will, to put my name in the book. It's, uh, it's probably one of the most expensive shoes that we've ever made. The sky's the limit. Yeah. yeah. With a bespoke order. We've made everything from sneakers to long boots to you name it. You know, it, there's, there's, there really is no limit. Yeah. Well, here we are in London back after almost two years of not being able to travel. I'm here on Savile Row. I mean, this is one of my favorite places in the entire world. I mean, this is the capital, the epicenter of bespoke craftsmanship, of classic menswear, uh, and I couldn't be more excited to finally be back. Our first stop today is at Gatiano and Gerling, uh, of course, the famous shoemaker, uh, where we're gonna go inside and catch up with my good friends, Tony Gatiano and Dean Gerling. Uh, join me as we see what they've been up to. Hey, Tony. Kirby. How are you doing? Kirby. It is so great to be back yeah, in the British soil. Yeah, welcome to the UK. Yeah. Nice to I see you I couldn't be again. more excited. And, you know, it's fitting this. We just landed this morning. This is our first stop. Yeah. And it's uh, so great to kind of be reunited with old friends that I haven't seen. I mean, it's pushing two years now, I know. right? I know. Yeah. Um, How's it been for all of you? I mean, it's been quite a journey. Well, we're kind of grateful least. to <laughs> kind of get to the other side yeah. of it a little bit. And, Absolutely. Uh, yeah, no, it's uh, it's been a difficult time, but, um, you know, it's uh, yeah, everything's coming to an end now, yeah. hopefully. And we can... Well, I think it's kind of interesting. I mean, as, as I was reflecting upon the trip before I left yesterday, I think I am more excited to come back with this trip than probably my first trip ever to Britain. Yeah. Wow. So I think, you know, it, you know, with things opening up, it's kind of renewed a sense of uh, excitement and um, uh, and just gratitude amongst us all for being able to travel and to see our friends and to experience British craft. And uh, I know it's, um, you know, it's uh, end of September right now. And, you know, you guys are able to come back to the United States in the beginning of November. Hopefully. Which is exciting. Yeah, yeah. 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 You know, keeping your fingers crossed. Nothing's certain That's the these plan. days. That's the plan. Yeah. Well, great. Well, how, I mean, you guys have been doing well? Yeah, I mean, it's been difficult 18 months, yeah. you know, two years, but um, we're getting back to some sort of normality now. Yeah. London's picking up, businesses yeah. on the way up, we're getting yeah. back to some sort of numbers we were before the pandemic started. Yeah. So, yes. But there was definitely traffic headed into the city from the airport, so it seems That's like good, yeah. things yeah. are returning to normal. Yeah. You know, and I, I reflect so fondly upon the factory tour we had out in Northampton. And I mean, how's the factory doing? I, I'm sure it had to shut down you know, for a period of time during all of this, but it's back running and... I think we, 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 we had to close down right at the beginning of the pandemic when um, basically the government didn't know what's going the majority on. <laughs> of businesses to close down. Um, but after that period, we've, we've we remained open and managed to maintain a good level of business by transferring a lot of our uh, attention onto the um, website. Yeah. Yeah, keep production going. You know, keeping the customers happy. Yeah. Online business grew phenomenally through the pandemic. That's great. A nice, a nice thing to happen. So yeah. yeah, we had to keep the factory going to fulfill the orders. Yeah. Um, well, it's I, I guess it's important to remember that Gatsiano and Girling started online, really, for all intents and purposes, right? I mean, I mean well, started with the trunk shows initially. Trunk shows, but yeah. Know, yeah. Um, but the, the, the online website predates the Savile Row flagship. I mean, you walk into this beautiful yeah. store and you think, but gosh, this. Feels like it's been here a long time. Yeah, yeah. You yeah know, in some did. ways it has, but the, yeah, the website has been there for. Yeah, from day one, really. Yeah. Uh, I mean, probably it's different format to what it is now, um, but um, you know, it's it's been an important part of our business right from the start. So, um, you know, I think we, when we knew we were going to have to close down initially, me and Dean had a long conversation and decided that the only way we're going to maintain the business is is really to put all our efforts into. Uh, the website to and 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 reach out to customers, mm -hmm. offer promotions and different ways to encourage people to come to us and yeah. uh, uh, and, and carry on ordering shoes. Were you, were you making more casuals? No, no, no really, no, pretty much across the board. Really, you know, okay. Um, it's a fine balance, you know, nice balance of dress shoes, Oxford, dress shoes, yeah. boots, casuals. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, well, that's great. Yeah. Well, I mean, of course, the beautiful shoes. I mean, it's one of the things people expect, yeah. uh, you know, from Gaziano. Yeah, I mean, that's great news, really, that, I mean, you guys had the website to really fall back on, yeah. you know, during these times where I know a lot of companies didn't, and they had to really spool up their online retail, mm. you know, pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, how's Bespoke been? I mean, 
that's been a particular challenge, just not being able to travel. How have you guys really approached that? Well, I think uh, bespoke in the beginning, um, it, it went really kind of slow because we couldn't meet up with uh, a lot of customers to fit them or to measure them. Uh, but on the positive side, it actually gives us a great opportunity to rethink the whole uh, department. Um, and, you know, we've, we've, we've spent a lot of time working with our craftsmen and, um, you know, basically getting me and myself and Dean more involved in the, um, the, the, the craftsmanship. In Back the to our roots, really. Yeah. yeah. Back to our roots. That's exciting. So uh, what does that mean? So you're doing last making now? and. Yeah, so I do a lot of the, the last making, the pattern cutting, uh, the clicking, um, and then we have a, um, a team of two makers um, and a manager in there that, um, that, that helps run, and then Dean, uh, when he has time, does some, some making as well. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah, it's kind of interesting to think about that because, I mean, of course, Gatiano is a large business now, and you guys are the owners and have been running it, but. You know, back, you know, 10, 15 years ago, you know, 15 really, whenever Gatiano yeah. and Girling started, uh, you were shoemakers. I mean, you were a bespoke last maker. Uh, you were a, a maker. Yeah, That's how you guys yeah, met. Yeah. And you yeah. kind of had this idea of, you know, really kind of updating the classic English aesthetic with a modern interpretation, which is what made, is yeah. what's made Gatiano and Girling famous. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Giving I mean, a fresh look. Yeah. 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 We've almost gone full circle. Yeah, full circle. That it's a yeah. it's a really elegant way to put it. Well, I think that, that over time it's easy to forget how much you enjoy craftsmanship, and um, you know uh, I think there there were many years where me, myself and Dean couldn't afford to be involved because of the demands of other other areas of the business. But as time goes on, we've managed to put supervisors and managers in certain departments, um, and it's it's created the time for us to. Uh, get back to where our passion really is. Yeah, yeah. that's exciting. Yeah, that's. Uh, I mean, again, you know, thinking about how Gatian and Girling started, it was you know the, the beautiful uh, design aesthetic, you know, that you had, Tony, you yeah. know, and that eye for last making, you know, that came from your background in bespoke last making that helped launch the business, and then you know, Dean, you know, you working, you know, with the making in order yeah. to e elevate. Uh, the factory, factory Goodyear uh, welted making to a higher standard. Yeah, it's a but, collaboration of the two things, yeah. you know. I mean, it goes back to when I worked in my garage, Dean worked in his shed, yeah. and, and there was just two of us. Yeah. You know, I would, I would do half the shoe. We were the production. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> send it to Dean, and Dean would, uh, would, would be the shoemaker that uh, hand, did the hand welting. You guys first it. broke out and were doing bespoke, yes. right? Yeah. Yeah. And that was, just the two of you, right? So you were previously with Cleverly, you guys had left, yeah. right? And it was kind of the incarnation of Gatiano and Girling. And then that, correct me if I'm wrong, evolved to the first Ready to Wear collection. That's right. But it really started, the seed was the bespoke. I think it was probably maybe a good 12 months before we really released any Ready to Wear. Yeah, that was still in development stages. We were still working on that. It's been yeah. A collection of shoes together. Still talking styles and everything, aren't we? And, yeah, yeah. Um, working with another manufacturer before we set our own mm -hmm. plant up. But yeah, that was the sow so the seed there. Yeah. yeah. So someone, I mean, a bespoke client, if they were to commission a pair of shoes, could have you know Tony Gaziano, you know, do the last making, take the measurements, make the last, and then Dean. I mean, you're overseeing the bespoke department. Yeah. You know, from a craftsmanship perspective, I mean, I think that that's kind of a really big deal. Um, you know, to have, you know, I mean, you know, I can say this, you can't, right? But I mean, one of the, you know, preeminent last makers of kind of this, this generation of bespoke last makers around today. Uh, and then, you know, backed up with Dean, you know, who of course was a very accomplished maker, you know, to have a pair of shoes go through that is, is really a yeah, pretty a profound opportunity, I think. Well, unique as well, because there's very few companies with the, with the founders at the helm, you know. Yeah. Um, who can at all. A shoe together. Yeah, they um, can do you it. You know, um, all our competitors out there have not got that privilege. Obviously. Absolutely. We have, so that's a nice thing as well. Well, this is something nice that's actually. really exciting. So to talk to you, I mean, you know, it's always been my dream to have you make a pair of shoes. And I think, you know, the, the challenge has been that you guys have been running the business, right? And so there was never really a possibility. But, uh, you know, I want to be one of the first ones out of the post-COVID gate, if you will, to put my name in the book. Yep. You know, so let's make sure that that's something we talk about. 
but I see an interesting pair of shoes back there. I mean, can you talk a little bit about some of your, I guess, more fascinating bespoke projects yeah. over the last few well, months? This is uh, not to everybody's taste, but it's quite unique. It's a, it's a very unique talking point. So this is uh, a pair of shoes made for a bespoke client that um, uh, is basically Mississippi alligator. Um, it has had uh, 22 karat gold um, kind of massaged into the, the creases between the scales and then a lacquer put on to seal the gold in there. So it's uh, probably one of the most expensive shoes that we've ever made. And um, all together with the bespoke craftsmanship um, and uh, it's very unique looking. I mean, it's really truly amazing that you can do absolutely anything that someone can dream up. Yeah. And it's a beautiful pair of shoes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the boundaries are, are, are endless yeah. to what you can do. Um, and and as, as, as much as the, the, the detail of the shoe is actually the skin, you know, the customers actually like to get creative with the style rather than the skin and produce, you know, one off, uh, you know, collection pieces yeah. of, of their own uh, by designing their own design. Yeah. You know, so it comes from all angles. Yeah, all angles, yeah. I mean, you can do the. Bes I mean, of course, the craftsmanship of bespoke is the backbone, but you know, custom finishes, custom patinas, custom skins. Yes. Uh, but even custom designs, where you're, you know, tracing out a totally custom pattern. The sky's and, the limit. Yeah. yeah. The bespoke order. We've made everything from sneakers to long boots to, you name it. You know, it, there's, there's, there really is no limit. To, to what you can achieve with, with hand making. To have a pair of shoes from Tony Gaziano and Dean Gerling, I mean, that is, that's a pretty big deal for someone that's really into this. Yeah, no, it's, and it's a what pleasure to make for you, Kirby. Yeah. So have you any idea what kind of thing you're thinking about? Or? Yeah, well, I mean, as you all know, I'm quite conservative in my taste um, mm. and I've got a lot of black cap to Oxfords. So maybe not another black cap to Oxford, although I don't think you can have too many. Uh, but a pair of shoes that I really loved that you guys did recently was the pair for the Prince of Wales, which oh. had a beautiful kind of Margot, kind of claret, burgundy beautiful. patina. Yeah. So which, which model was that exactly? Uh, so actually this was the model. Uh, it's not exactly the same as, uh, as, as Prince of Wales' shoes because obviously Prince of Wales is, has quite conservative taste. So we, we kind of bespoke the toe shape personally to suit him, which was along the lines of um, you know, the lines of a classic round toe. Okay. Yeah, which is uh, in between the DG70 and the DG06. Yeah. So that's a nice conservative round toe. And that's another beautiful classic. thing about the bespoke process is that the toe shape can be totally bespoke and one-off. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, completely tailored to the individual taste. I mean, normally our, our um, you know, um, what we're better known for is a slightly sleeker look, yeah. um, and uh, which I think would suit you yeah. beautifully. Well, I think if I'm going to have shot. you guys do something, um, I really want it to um, epitomize kind of the essence or the brand DNA, um, okay. something that really is iconically Gatsiano and Gerling. Yeah. So where would you take me in terms of Toe shape because I really want it to be a manifestation of, of you, well, of I think Tony, the, and then Dean. The whole shoe can be a, a fusion of what the Prince of Wales had, and uh, and, a, and, a, and a you know an, an ideal Gaziano and Girling shoe. What a lot of people wear instead of black is a slightly off black color, so like a dark burgundy, dark brown, and mm -hmm. um, we have this Margot color. Patina, yeah, Absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, look at this. So this is kind of a burgundy, it's like a dark burgundy. It is. Right, so it's not an ox blood, yeah. right? And this would work because again, I, I find myself drawn towards those darker colors, right? Sure. So I'm yeah. wearing grays and dark navies, uh, and this would work that almost grows. anywhere that black would work. Absolutely, yeah. complicated yeah. navy suit you're wearing today, a nice charcoal gray suit. Mm -hmm. And it can be made a little bit darker, a little bit lighter to your taste, you know, so. You know, it all, almost can be made kind of black with a with a with the translucent of yeah. the of the burgundy underneath. Yeah, I think that's kind of the direction I would yeah. I would go in. And again, all of your bespoke shoes. I mean, it's a crushed leather; it's undyed, and that's so right. it's being hand patinaed. Yeah, you know, absolutely. there in the factory uh, by your patina artist. That's correct. Yeah. yeah, that's exciting. 
Yeah, so I, I like that. And so this is a, what, an Adelaide? Maybe? Yeah, so this is um, what we call St. James. Okay. Um, and we have St. James one and two, only separated by a peak in the counter. Okay. So His Royal Highness had the more conservative, yeah. um, you know, version of it. Is that the one or the two? This is the one, okay. yeah. So yeah, the two, two, yeah. It's got a little peak on the counter. Yeah. 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 Well, I think I'd go for the St. James's one. Yeah. And I like the broguing. I mean, again, a nice little decorative detail, dressing up what would otherwise be just a plain cap to Oxford. Yeah. yeah, nice balanced. Yeah, well, that's the beauty of, you know, your eye for design is yeah. that, you know, all of the patterns are beautifully balanced. And then to have you do the last making is particularly exciting. And then have it made kind of in-house under the tutelage of, you know, Dean and Tony. I mean, again, it's, you know, I get really excited about this because I'm Kirby Allison, I suppose, but uh, um, I mean, you know, it's a rare opportunity at this moment in time, you know, to have just, uh, at, the just at the right time. It's like, uh, what luck. You yeah, know? yeah, definitely. Well, it, like I said, it'll be an absolute pleasure to make you a pair. And uh, I think, you know, the, the, the style and choice that you're going for make a really stunning, yeah. stunning shoe. Oh, I'm so excited. So talk to me a little bit about just process. Um, because I know every bespoke house is a little bit different in terms of the approach. So yeah, what we do generally is obviously we go through all the different measurements uh, with you. We take it back to the workshops. We make up the last and we make up a dummy shoe. It's not welted uh, and it's not the real shoe. Okay. It's it's made out shoe of trial shoe. yeah, it's made trial out shoe. of second grade leather. And we put it you know we put it together roughly in the style of this, of what you've chosen, um, and we put like a cork sole on it and then we hopefully we come to america to see you um yeah. or or maybe if you come back to the shop you know we can we can fit you there we cut the shoe up and look at different elements of the shoe just to make sure uh the fits perfect and uh and then we either go on for another fitting depending on how well that goes or you know we we can continue yeah. and make the shoe up yeah. yeah i mean it's one of the questions that a lot of uh, customers ask me is that in the bespoke process what should the customer expectation be for that first pair? Is it perfect or is it a work in progress where the first one is, you know, almost there, but the, you know, like, I mean, how much refinement is between pairs two and three? Um, there can always be fine tweaks. Uh, I mean, obviously, from initially taking a shoe out of the box and then to wear, wear it, everybody, you know, wears a shoe differently, mm -hmm. you know, the moisture and the warmth of your feet do mold the shoe to your feet. Mm -hmm. So, so even know, with they're, bespoke, they're, there's a little break in. May, yeah, after the first pair, second pair, you may come back and say, hey, you know, can you refine it a little bit? But we're talking we can, minor yeah, tweaks. We're talking minor tweaks, that's what the fittings are for. Yeah. So if we do one, two fittings, we get to where yeah. the customer's happy, and then maybe he may want yeah. some tweaks, yeah. adjustments mm -hmm. from that initial yeah. first pair. Mm -hmm. That's quite normal. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's exciting. And you guys, what's great is that with, you know, travel being opened up, I mean, you guys travel through the United States twice a year. Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, I, I think the, the, the schedule is, is that I fly out to D.C. Uh, we have a little cocktail evening before the show starts. We do a couple of days in D.C. Then I fly out to New York and Dean flies from London to New York. We do the same again. We do three day shows in uh, New York this time. Mm -hmm. um, and then we fly to Dallas. Or I'm, coming for, to Dallas. I'm coming for a steak in Dallas. Yes, great. That's where the best steak is, right? Yeah, well, there's, you know, there's good steak in Texas, let me tell you. It certainly is. Um, and then, so we do Dallas for a couple of days. We do Houston for a day. Okay. And then we end up in Los Angeles. Um, and, you know, we're working with the Prince's Trust as well to try and, um, you know, support, uh, you know, young people as well. Mm -hmm. Trade, so uh, there's lots going on. There's yeah. lots going on. Yeah. That's exciting. Yeah. yeah, well, it's been so long since we've been able to get over the pond, so we're yeah. very excited about coming. Well, hopefully, it's a very uh, yeah. enthusiastic reception, at least for all those who are really passionate about quality yeah. craftsmanship and tradition. To be able to, you know, support British craft again is important. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be think, great uh, to see the customers again. Yeah. Yeah. Well, great. Well, that's exciting to see you guys in America, to see you here. Yeah and to, um, you know, to be able to kind of kick off that bespoke process. So I guess next is bespoke measurements. So we'll do those here yeah. in a bit. Yeah. 
kind of get going. Yeah, get the ball rolling. Yeah. Well, great. Well, Tony, thank you so much. All right. You know, it's great to and, see you. Um, congratulations, Thanks, and you know, Thank Dean, you. always you a pleasure.